does your REIT have a number of properties for the anchor tenant to move within the ecosystem? Okay, so the second thing, I uh, wanted to be even more clearer and concise with the points so that uh, I just take, I just take up two minutes of the time. Today's third op, one of the questions posed by the online uh, value investing community was, uh, Mingan, are there any other financial factors when I assess my REITs? In fact, today, I'm back here at the dining hall of the Asia Square Tower 2. Okay. Very nice Furbish dining hall. Okay. So this place has uh, taught me of uh, the following point. Does your REIT have a number of properties for the anchor tenant to move within the ecosystem? What happened previously uh, with this Asia Square Tower 2 or why it was memorable to me was Mizuho, uh, which I record is a Japanese bank, uh, was an anchor tenant at uh, Capital Land Tower. Subsequently, Mizuho released a message saying that oh, it has moved over to Asia Square Tower 2. At the point of time, uh, Capital Commercial Trust did not own this place. But currently, as of this point of recording this video, 3rd October 2019, Asia Square Tower 2 is already under its current REIT portfolio. So this lesson taught me that when an anchor tenant wants to move, be it upgrade the space, okay, or downgrade the space, does the existing REIT have a space that's readily available? What came to my mind is also taking note of your occup occupancy rate. When a REIT or when a property has full occupancy rate, uh, it is also a double edged sword. Right, because if an anchor tenant who needs to up expand the space is not able to readily find another space within that REIT ecosystem, what happens to the anchor tenant? The anchor tenant would most probably has to move to look for another uh, office space to settle in their operations. So, the non financial factor that I look at in a summary is whether the REIT has a number of uh, properties available for anchor tenants or tenants to move be it to upgrade or down upgrade the size or downgrade its size so that the REIT still can continue to add value to the anchor tenants or all its tenants so this is basically one of the non-financial factors that I'll look at when I assess my REITs so here's the call to action uh, if you'd like to get the checklist that I've provided um, through the 10 years of uh, investing in REITs, uh, kindly just go down to the description of this uh, video at the bottom and just opt into the chatbot so that uh, the assistant, the chatbot assistant will be able to send you the checklist. So I just, I just hope that the checklist would uh, add some value to you and help you refine your own uh, REITs investing framework. Once you opt in, it also means that I know who I can reach out to so that I don't spam people. I send what you wish to receive. Have fun investing in REITs. Does this work? Does it? I think this should work. Right? This should work.